So as the president of the East Vancouver Community Music School, I would like to acknowledge that this seminar is being held on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. We make this acknowledgement to show good intent as friends, neighbors, and allies on the road towards reconciliation. And this seminar celebrating diversity and our Equal Measure Festival in the spring is our attempt to put these words into action and celebrate diversity in the musical world. So let's welcome our host, Sarah Westwick. Hi. And thank you everybody for joining us. Hi. Uh, oops, I probably shouldn't have gone to that one just yet. I hope we can see things, good. Uh, just starting by saying that we're holding the seminar um, as a way to help string teachers, violin and viola teachers anyway, uh, to prepare for the festival that we'll be having on Sunday, February 25th. Uh, that's our Equal Measure Festival. And as a part of the festival, there are two student recitals with a professional recital in the middle. Um, the recital in the middle this time is a vocal recital of the soprano Evelyn de la Haye will be singing with Tina Chang on piano. We're very excited about that. That'll be wonderful. Um, so to help teachers find music that they can prepare their students for in time for the recital on February 25th. And um, we'll let you know when <laughs> applications to, uh, to play in that come up. That recital is not just for EVCMS students. It is open to any students who can come in person. Um, so anyone in the lower mainland, basically. So um, I have been researching, learning, and performing music by women composers for 25 years now. And I used to run a chamber music organization called A Celebration of Women Composers back in the 1990s. And back then, before the advent of IMSLP, which has helped a great deal, finding this music was much harder than it is now. There were not as many resources. It's still not easy, but it is easier than it was. Um, and since then, I have performed music by at least 65 composers from historically excluded groups. I stopped counting. <laughs> I started making a list and I thought, I'm... and I've taught music by, again, at least 25, probably more. Uh, and I've listened to music by hundreds of others. And in all this time, there are three things that I'd like to share about this. And that's here on the screen. One, I did not learn about any of these composers at university or in, move that up, in my formal training before or after. All been directed um, partly because I'm interested and partly because the places where we study about music don't teach us these things. Uh, two, I'm still finding composers who've written magnificent, magnificent music whom I've never heard of before. Um, they are, even with all of those, they're still, I still get surprised. And three, and this, this I think is important, there's so much research happening now, especially in the last 10 years, so much more, that what we know keeps changing. And so it's important that we use phrases such as, as far as we know, or according to current research, when we're talking about these composers and their works. If we say, this is the only piece by this composer that has survived, five years from now, that won't be true, hopefully. Um, things like that. So those, that's just a little background I'd like to, to keep. Oops. There we go. The canon. Well, no, not that kind, but I needed a pretty picture. <laughs> so uh, I have some questions to, to just have in the back of your mind as we're looking at this. And um, we're not going to answer these questions um, or even really talk about them right now. I just want to put them out there. And so the questions are, what is the canon? Why does it exist? Should it change? And if so, how? Um, and related to this, I just want to tell you a little story, which is a bit about why I got into all of this. Or, well, it was after I started getting into it, but anyway. So many years ago, I was taking a teacher training course and the instructor asked us to list the pieces uh, that we felt our students should listen to. So that the professional level pieces that are little little tiny book one students are learning, or are, are, um, we're teaching book one students, but they should be listening to professional level repertoire, hearing the greats. And there was a blackboard and we were supposed to write them on the board. 
And you know, the other students were going up and putting up the standard repertoire on the board. And so I went up and I added, I can't remember exactly all the pieces I added. I know I added the Sonata Duodecima by Isabella Leonarda, which is a wonderful piece. Um, the Romance by Amy Beach. And I added the Rebecca Clark Viola Sonata, even though it was a violin class, because I think violin students should also learn about viola and a few others. And then the instructor walked up with the eraser and he erased all of those pieces from the board. And he said, it's important for students to be familiar with the standard canon before indulging in, quote, fringe music. That's what he called it. Now, I wanted to get credit for the course. I was a student, um, so I didn't challenge him. I didn't stand up and ask him, why was he doing that? Why did he think these pieces aren't part of the canon? Um, and, I, and I regret not doing that. I regret not standing up and, and just challenging him to think a bit more deeply about that. And I would like to challenge anyone to study the Violin Sonata by Amanda Röntgen Meyer and defend the fact that it's not part of the st standard repertoire. It's an amazing piece. Uh, it, extremely well written for both of the, both the violin and the piano part well written. Um, it's gorgeous. It's lovely. Every time I've played it, people, the audiences have loved it. And um, Johannes Brahms went to Amanda Röntgen Meyer and he asked her for advice when he was writing his third violin sonata. So she was good enough that he had enough respect for her that he wanted her advice. So that one should definitely be part of the canon if we're going to have a canon. All of this music um, is, is quality music that deserves to be studied. It's been kept out of the, the standard canon, the standard repertoire, because of sexism or racism or a combination or some other ism. Was, was the sexism or racism deliberate or systematic or unintentional combination? Does it matter? No, I, th I think what matters is simply that it was left out and that we should find it, rediscover it, and share it. Our students deserve to see that composers come in all genders and races, and they deserve to see that the diversity that, that exists in the world at large is reflected in the world of classical music and in the world of composers, and they deserve to hear and study this wonderful music. So first, whoops, there we go. <laughs> Um, I have these charts that I've done up um, comparing the, the representation in RCM and ABRSM. And I just want to talk a little tiny bit about the difference between um, RCM and ABRSM. Most of you probably know, but um, um, ABRSM, first of all, goes from grade one to grade eight, and then they have their whatever the equivalent of ARCT is, whereas RCM goes one to ten. So the, the grades don't line up. By the time you get to level four ABRSM, that's like level five RCM. And by the time you get to level eight ABRSM, the British one, that's like grade 10 in the Canadian one. So they don't, they don't line up equally. And so when I did this chart, um, maybe I can make this a little bigger. No, I can't do that here. Okay. Um, I don't know if, how well you can read that in the room. Um, I've got, so the repertoire books over here, and then on the other side, the, the syllabus, or syllabi, I suppose I should say. And uh, there's a, for violin here, for RCM, there's the 2013 and the 2021. And, um, uh, and for up to the junior levels, I did up to level four for the Canadian system and up to level three for the British. And a couple of things that are interesting, um, first of all, is that the representation in the ABRSM is across the board. Um, you see pretty close to 20-something percent in each and every grade, not just the beginner grades. So your average in the junior levels is 27%, in the intermediate levels, 21%, and in the senior levels, 23 for an average overall of 24. And unfortunately, when we look at the Canadian system, we see much higher representation here in the preparatory and level one grades so that the junior level adds up to 32%, much less here in the intermediate grades. So you see 12, four, six, 16. So we have an average of 9%. Um, and in the senior grades, 
um, down seven, eight, seven percent, average of seven percent. So much less um, representation in the senior grades and, and intermediate and senior. And this is a bit of a problem. The other thing that's that's um, interesting about this, um, the ABRSM writes a new syllabus every four years. And so there is a new one that is out in 2024, um, but I had already done this before I saw that. Um, so I haven't updated this with the 2024 syllabus. And the other thing is you'll notice um, in RCM, there tends to be you know sometimes over a hundred pieces for a grade, whereas, and, and lots more in the higher grades. Whereas in the British system, they have exactly 30 pieces in each and every grade. Every grade has three categories, 10 pieces in each thing. And they change it every four years. And, and they really change it. Um, because it's that much smaller, I suppose it's, that, it's a lot easier to change. Um, so RCM, it's going to take longer to get more diversity there because they only do a new syllabus every 10 years. And their syllabus, it'd be a lot harder, I would think, to go through because they've got so many pieces. So it'll take time, but you can also see um, that there has been some improvement um, in the RCM from 2013 to 2021. Um, so that's that's good. Uh, and then I've let's come back to here. I've also got a similar one for viola. Problem with viola is the last syllabus from RCM was 2013. Hasn't been um revised yet i have no idea when it will be revised but i hope that will happen and uh, and again you see the same thing in the syllabus for for the british system it's very much even across the board this diversity um and for the viola because i did that one afterwards but i by then i had the 2024 syllabus um so again it's that same thing 20 percent 20 something percent across the board um now the abrsm repertoire books. I will talk about that when we get to the viola repertoire section in a minute. Um, it's it's kind of annoying, <laughs> but I'll, hang on, I'll talk about that in a minute. So let us go to junior level repertoire for violin. Yay. Um, I have these Google Docs. There we go. And you'll see on the side here, there's room for comments. And I've put, I don't know if I can move this so you can see, over here it says share. Anybody who has the link can have access and can make comments. Um, so if you want to make a comment, for instance, about something in this book, all you do is come over here and you click on it. Okay, and then you see this and you click on the plus sign and you can write your comment. Um, so I'm hoping that other teachers will add pieces that they like, that they feel are good. You can add whatever pieces in whatever category, and if this keeps going through all the way to the senior stuff, we'll be coming back to this a few times. Um, and there with what I feel is an appropriate RCM level, some people may disagree, that's fine. Um, the asterisks, yeah, we're in the ABRSM syllable, silt syllabus. So RCM levels, preparatory to level three. Um, and I, I did it that way because of, well, anyway. So there are many pieces in the music by black composers. I don't know if you can see that. Um, um, so far, volume, volume one is the only one that is available. Um, it is an excellent book, it has um, beginner to an elementary level. And uh, it, first of all, has both uh, duet parts, so you can have two violins. It also has um, options to have violin and piano, be accompanied by piano, so you can do it either way. And in the books, uh, for each composer, there's uh, some information and there's a picture, uh, and it's quite age appropriate because they know this is this is meant for younger kids. And then and then you'll have little little boxes that explain some words that might be be different um, from from what they're used from what um, yeah you're used to, and uh, and they're they're really well done. It's a good. Uh, um, overview of, of music by black composers. And let me just check. Um, so that's the first section. There are plans for volume two. It's not out yet. There are plans for volumes for viola. Those aren't out yet. Um, of note, the uh, Ogungbe, Feeling the Pulse, I put that right here. There we go. That is a favorite of a lot of my students. It's a great piece. It's fun, has lots of slightly different rhythms. He's a composer from Nigeria and England, goes back and forth. 
and um, and it's great. There's also a number of pieces by Ignatius Sancho, uh, and he's a really good composer to learn about. And again, uh, in here when they where they talk about him, whoops, I didn't save that page. Page twelve. Here we go. Um, it talks about how, you know how he was um, born as a slave on a ship, and so it, it you know it doesn't sugarcoat that. It does explain that, but it it does it in a more gentle way, knowing that they're talking to young kids. So it's it's a bit of a balance for that. And and here there's a little um, there's a picture of him in a little um, sidebar that explains what the word abolish means. It means to end a system of practice. Slavery was abolished in England and throughout the British Empire in 1833. Uh, so it's great the students get to learn about the composers and, and a little bit about them. And especially Ignatius Sancho, he's someone that a lot of people are learning about nowadays. Now, um, I just want to leave this for a second and come back here. Oops, is it? There we go. Yes, The Music by Black Composers, Volume 1. Um, I won't bother clicking on the website. I think you can find that yourselves. They have a YouTube channel and reference recordings that has all of the pieces from, from the book. Um, and then here I wanted to play a little bit of this one because it's fun. I'm just actually playing half of that song um, so that we have time to do more things. Good. So that was the um, music by Black composers. Uh, and then also in the, the, the violin list, I should go back. Can I do this? There we go. Um, also in the violin list here, um, the violin music by women composers. And this is the violin one, um, edited by Cora Cooper. If you don't know this book, you should just like the NBC book, it's wonderful. Again, she puts um, biographies in the back of the book for all the composers that are there. And uh, these are all pieces that, that were written for violin. A lot of the pieces in, in the music by black composers are pieces that have been arranged for violin, like you often have with beginner books. Whereas this one is from a lot of like violin pedagogues over time. Uh, and it's a great resource, has lots of fun pieces in it. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that when we get to the viola version. Uh, in the RCM books, there are a lot of pieces by Christine Donkin, which is great. She is, if you don't know her music, you should, because she's really creative and fun. Um, her costume party and fall fair books are no longer available. They're no longer um, being printed. But if you go to her website, um, there are links and you can buy them for download. So you can you can pay for pay for the pieces and, and have them downloaded yourself. She is working on making them available through CMC, but that's not happened yet. But you can, as I said, go to her website, there's lots of great stuff there. Now, a la jeunesse from um, CMC. Uh, what I have is a really old book. And it, it uh, there was a series of these books, and they had pieces by Jean Coulthard, Jean Etheridge, and David Duke. And Thomas Rolston was the, the violinist who was um, advising them about violin technique. And there's a, and CMC now has a different book called A la Jeunesse, which is just the Jean Coulthard pieces. So I'm not sure where you find the Jean Etheridge ones or the David Duke, um, but you can always ask CMC. So we are, um, Holly is going to join me, and we are going to play a piece from the uh, from the A la Jeunesse. I'm going to stop the share for the moment. There we go. And uh, this is a piece uh, that I always teach to the Book One kids. Um, it's a great piece for introducing students to the concept of programmatic music. It's great for working on dynamics because it's a lot more effective if you get your forte and your piano. And I'm just going to tell you that bar eight is the favorite bar of all of my students. And I want to see if you can guess which bar that is when we get to it. <laughs> so this is called Grandfather Tells a Witch Story by Jean Coulthard. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
not the favorite bar for the parents ah right but it's definitely the favorite bar for the students <laughs> and you know who doesn't like a piece that makes your students want to practice right i mean it's just it is um it's so great that yeah the kids oops share again there we go okay so that is the junior violin stuff i want to talk about now junior level viola and again i have a similar um, Google Doc, it's shareable. Anybody can come on and say anything. You can comment. Um, right. And so one of the things I say and hear about the music by Black composers is for viola, they have not yet done the viola book, which is too bad. However, um, especially Suzuki teachers, we tend to teach our book one students by ear. You play the piece and they hear it by ear. And because the, the MBC, Music by Black Composers, has duet parts for all the pieces it is um, quite possible to teach these pieces to your beginner viola students by ear so they're not confused with trouble clef and and then you just play the the harmony part on your viola just everything down a fifth um, and it works quite well if, if you're teaching by ear so in the meantime until they get around to doing um, releasing the viola books that's an option um, and and that gives first of all it means they have those pieces which are lovely and fun and great um, and it also means that they get introduced to these composers and the ideas about their lives and, and and what they were doing also here there are many pieces by christine donkin from her costume party and and the fall fair books that are in the rcm repertoire books oh i should have said the the um the piece that we play, The Grandfather Tells a Witch Story, is in the RCM syllabus. It's not in the repertoire book, though, so you do have to get it from CMC. Okay, Christine Duncan. So she has not actually released the costume party or the fall fair books as viola transcriptions. So the only ones that are um, available for viola are the ones that are in the RCM repertoire books. However, I did actually send her an email, and I did get a reply. And you now where did I put that? And anyway, she did say that um, they are, the, um, they are, those are, uh, oops, sorry. Um, uh, my notes here. Um, she did say that um, she might make them available, the viola ones, if there seems to be enough interest. So if there are any viola teachers out there who want more of her costume party or fall fair pieces for your viola students, um, just go to her website and hit contact and say, hey, have you ever have you transcribed this piece for viola? I'd love to teach it to my students. Um, and I'm sure she'd happily oblige. Um, also in, in RCM books, in the, in the repertoire books, um, in book three, there's Budapesto by Carrie Cheney. And um, my viola students love it. It's also, it's orig originally for cello. Cello students love it. And I think some of my violin students are jealous that they don't get to learn it because it's not in the violin series. I say, well, too bad. You want to play it, you got to learn viola. <laughs> uh, she's also a Canadian composer. Um, so now, oh, sorry, I forgot to say this. On the viola page, I, this is a little bit different. At the top here, I've got a link, and I'm going to show this now. I might as well show this now. Liv Elfkul is a Swedish violist. Here we go. And, and it's okay, she's got, some of her pages have 
I think maybe all the pages have in both Swedish and English, so you'll be fine. Um, see, there's the Swedish and there's the English. And um, she has this, She's now this is following the ABRSM grades, so keep that in mind when you're looking at this. Um, and that's showing up there. Hard to read up there, but yes. Um, so this is ABRSM level one, et cetera. And she's got lists of all these, you know, what she feels is, is a good list of repertoire for students. Um, and uh, so it's, you know, it's a mixture of both pieces by men and pieces by women. And then she's recorded a number of them here. Um, so here, this, this first one that's recorded is by Augusta Holmes. there. Augusta Holmes was a, a French composer from the late 19th, uh, cent, uh, 19th, uh, 19th century. Um, and she mostly wrote a lot of really big stuff, like big symphonic stuff and stuff for enormous forces. Um, so this is just, a, that's a sweet little song that she wrote and that, that Liv Elfkuhl has um, uh, done for viola. So there's a, lots of lovely pieces here. And again, you, we've got the SoundCloud recording here. Um, and also at the top here, here we go. Um, there's a there's a link to her album, which is on Spotify. The album it doesn't include um, the album is all music for viola by women composers. I'll get to that later because there's something else from there I want to play, and um, and it goes through to, to much more advanced music. It's a lovely album and a lot of fun. Now, how do I get back to here? Sorry, I want to come back to there. Okay, no, I want to come back here. Okay, so that was the Liv Elfkuhl. So that's a great resource for viola teachers and for violists as well. There's pieces on her album that you might want to learn and perform yourself. Um, ABRSM, okay. Um, this is a little annoying, I'm so sorry. Uh, you know how with, with the Canadian system, with RCM, we have repertoire books from levels one through eight. Once you get to level nine, you've got to find your own editions, whatever. Um, and ABRSM does level one through eight for violin. They're not doing that for viola at the moment. Um, they have they have a repertoire book for the preparatory grade, um, and then after that they don't. Um, there is a book called Viola Mix, um, which has a number of pieces that are in the exam. But the Viola Mix books have twenty pieces, and you know. Maybe six of them are included in the in the exam. Um, the now the viola mix books, however, if you're not worried about doing an ABRSM exam and you're just looking for material to play and to teach, the viola mix books are actually quite good. They have um, a lot of diversity. They have some standard things. They've got some Tchaikovsky and some Bach and 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 the stuff you you would expect to see. And they also have. Let's see. So Viola Mix 1 contains 20 pieces at the ABRSM preparatory and grade one level, including folk songs from various cultures. Oh, and that's one thing I do like about the ABRSM, both violin and viola, is in those first um, junior grades, so preparatory through level three, they do have um, folk songs from really around the world. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that with both violin and viola, by the time you get from preparatory through level three, you will have found folk songs from every continent except for Antarctica. Um, yeah, they really need to work on that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, and they also have um, uh, pieces by Elizabeth Klojek and Laguerre. That one is actually not in the ABRSM exam, but it's in the Viola Mix One book. Um, do you know who Elizabeth Klojek and Laguerre? She's a French composer, child prodigy um, at the time of Louis the and I always get the numbers mixed up. I should have written it that down. Um, but she was uh, very well respected, uh, harpsichord player, improviser, composer, wrote lots of music. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff for piano, a lot of piano books of, of stuff that she's written, and a lot of cantatas for singers um, that are really that early French Baroque, really creative kind of stuff. Um, I'll get back to her when we're talking about violin because there's some sonatas that are great for your upper intermediate level students. 
but Viola, there's a piece by her in, in the uh, Viola Mix One book, and I put a link to where you can get it. Um, I also actually have seen the Viola Mix, or I haven't seen them, but um, you can order the Viola Mix One books from our local um, music stores as well. You don't have to go to the website if you don't want to. And Viola Mix Two, again, pieces by Chiquina Gonzaga, Francesca Lebrun, Amy Beach, Joseph de Boulogne, also known as the Chevalier de Saint-Georges. I hope you know about him. Um, arrangements of uh, Ugandan and, and Ghanaian songs. Now, the, he, this is a recording, yes. Althea Talbot Howard is a uh, British composer. And um, I'm, again, I'm just gonna play a tiny bit of this. Whoops, I wanna go to the end of the Oops, what the Seeds. Oh, shoot. Sorry, so much for the tech bee. <laughs> Here we go. So I am just going to stop there ah, so we don't run out of time. Um, that's a lovely little piece, nice, gentle pavan. Okay, so that was Althea Talbot Howard. Oh, Patsy, I don't know if I say Gritton, Gritton, Brighton, not sure how to say her name, sorry. Uh, character pieces. Uh, here is book two. Uh, and again, these you can get here. Um, the, uh, the third one in this book is called Drama Queen. Um, I had been thinking if there was time, we might actually perform that one as well, but there isn't time and getting up and down and all that. Um, but you can imagine, it's called Drama Queen. It's, it's good fun. Um, that one I think is actually, that's later on. I was, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's more in the intermediate levels. Um, the book one is, is uh, this is more intermediate. Book one is more junior. Uh, now, viola music by women composers. Here we go. Yes, there we go. The viola book is purple. It's a lovely purple. Um, so this is a sort of, um, there's, again, there's the different, uh, four different volumes. This is the beginner and there's intermediates. And uh, this is great. They give, they give uh, biographies of the composers at the back. The viola one does um, uh, have a lot of, the beginner book has a lot of pieces that were transcribed from the violin book. So all the pieces that you really like in the violin book are in the viola book. There's some lovely ones there. Um, oh, I was going to mention, actually, in both the violin and the viola books, there's a piece called Dance of the Gnomes that's about at RCM level three. Uh, and that's great fun. It's like my, my students have had fun with that. Um, what I'm just going to play a tiny bit of for you is the beginning of this one from her. There's uh, one of the things in these new books is in the viola books, um, they um, commissioned some pieces by a Australian composer, Wendy Ireland. And part one of the things she did was a suite called um, the Kitty Miniatures or Gattino. She gave it the Italian name. How do you, how do you say that? Back. Anyway, um, Gatto, whatever. Uh, here, oh, I want to start about there. Is this it? You get the idea. It's a fun, it's a cute piece. Um, yes, you need to have a little cat bell. I'm always amazed when I watch the video how the cat bell doesn't seem to ring when she's playing, even though it's hanging off her, the, uh, I guess it's either the A or the D peg. Um, and it only rings when she, when she jiggles it. Um, but I think that's something that students would have fun with. I haven't actually taught that one yet myself, but I, th I think that would be fun. Uh, and because I thought we needed a break from all that. <laughs> and because we just did the kitty miniatures, here's my cats. There's Rosie, there's Cola, and this one here is Cookie. And yes, they like to come and hang out when I'm teaching. And if a student leaves their violin or viola case open, uh, these two will tend to get in there and curl up and etc. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, before we get on to the intermediate stuff, is there anyone on the chat or anyone in the room who has questions about junior level stuff? Or should we just keep going? Okay, we'll keep going. Uh, so again, I've got the same um, doc here. Uh, and there's media. Now, concertos. Uh, so RCM has two concertos in level four. Um, there's the, the Natalia Baklanova and the Charlotte Ruger. Um, I, I feel actually the Charlotte Ruger is a little bit hard for grade four. I, I personally think it should be done by grade five students. It's got double stops. It's got some slightly complicated things. Um, and I think it's more similar to the first two sites concertos that are in book four Suzuki, which are RCM level five. Um, so, pers but the Ruger has been in RCM level four for a long time. Um, it was there in the 2006 syllabus as well. So, um, Maybe it's just me, but I think it should be level five. Um, the uh, and the Bacla Nova is great. It's a really good first concerto. It's got a little mini cadenza. She's a Russian composer, um, so you get a slightly different feel from what we often at this level. We get a lot of the German stuff. We get all the the sights and the reading and the Kuchler and and they're all quite similar. I mean, they're they're good pieces, but they're all very similar. So it's nice to have this, which is a little bit different. Um, and in level five, um, there's the Grazina Bakowicz concertino, the first movements in the syllabus, not the, and not the repertoire books and not the other two movements. And it's a lovely concerto, actually. It's a really good one. Um, after that, there are no more concertos in RCM by, by the women composers or black composers. And ABRSM is no help because they do, do very little in terms of concertos um, in their syllabus and in, in their system. It's a different system. Um, so it's really difficult finding concertos um, that that um, that are by women composers, or black composers for these intermediate. Once we get to the senior level, I'll have some advice of concertos that your students can learn that are great concertos. Um, but this this intermediate level is a bit tricky, and I'm sorry if that's kind of the way it is. I did want to play. For now, for now, this might change. <laughs> um, just if you're not familiar with it, the Gratina um, Bakowicz Concertino, let's just come ahead a little bit. Okay, that's it. I'm just giving you a little taste of it. And you can go and listen to the whole thing. Um, the I said the 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 link is here. The link is also here. Oh, I thought I'd put the link there. Whoops. Okay, I will fix that later. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to have links to recordings in the Google Docs, and I obviously forgot to put that one there. We'll do that later. Um, sonatas. Okay, sonatas. There are some lovely Baroque sonatas. Remember, I mentioned Elizabeth Claude Jacquet Laguerre. Um, her sonata number one uh, in D minor, the sixth movement, the aria, I think could be done by a level four student. It's a much easier piece. It's quite lovely. Again, early French Baroque. It's, it's a nice different style from a lot of what we teach. Otherwise, for sonatas, I don't really see anything in level four. Uh, when we get to level five, again, um, any, any of the movements from her first or second sonata. And if we click on this, you can see um, what I've written here about it, and I've put some links. There's a recording of, of all of the um, sonatas here at this link. And uh, on IMSLP, they're available with fingered bass, but they have also been re um, realized, so you don't have to have a Baroque specialist to accompany <laughs> your kids, um, by Führer Verlag. Führer Verlag is, um, a, there'll be a, another link later on to them. They're an excellent resource of, of, of published music by women composers. They're really, like Hildegard. Um, Hild, uh, Hildegard Publishing is the other one that's really good for that. Um, so for sonatas for that and for level six um, sonatas, again, um, there's the Madame um, de la Val, and that's in uh, one of the, uh, that's in, I think, an intermediate two of, of this series, Sleepy Puppy Press. Um, Oh, I didn't bring my violin music. Okay, Francesca Lebrun. Um, and again, I've got a link here to the publishers and, and a link to a recording. Uh, 
1756 to 1791. We don't know a lot about her. We don't know a lot of music by her. We do have these six sonatas she wrote. Um, there might be other music, but at least those six that we know of, um, and they're great. They're really good. Um, the F major is is in that book, um, but you, I think all of them are available on IMSLP. And Isabella Leonarda, Sonata Geodesima. This is such a wonderful piece. And I do want to share just a second of this video. And it's a piece that is getting um, more play nowadays. It was performed this summer, um, EMV, Early Music Vancouver. Um, Chloe Myers with, with Alex Wyman played it as one of their uh, one of their concerts this summer. It was lovely. It's great to hear it on Baroque violin and harpsichord. Um, and there's a great recording here of Byron Schenkman and um, um, Ingrid Matthews. Here we go. And I'm, I can't remember exactly now how many movements there are. I think there might be eight, quite a few anyway. Um, so that's a, a good fun piece for students to learn. Uh, and then looking at um, concert repertoire, concert pieces starting at level four, coming back to here. Um, Again, music by black composers. There are a couple of pieces there. The Chalk Drops and the Entertainer, great. Um, the Violin Music by Women Composers, that was that blue book. Um, Josephine Trott, of course, we're all familiar with her melodious double stops. And the puppet show is in the um, um, Barbara Barber book. This one includes uh, two tuneful sketches uh, and the, the um, dancing class one is one that I've had students play and, and quite enjoy. And uh, and then the Mary O'Hara Sunset Dance is in the RCM four syllabus. Maybe it could be level five. Um, these two pieces here that I mentioned about ABRSM again, I was doing this before the 2024 syllabus had come out, so they are in the repertoire books from 2020. Um, so again, I'll need to update that. But those uh, Rachel Slot has got a bunch of things, and again, really. Um, Fun and Ross Stevens is is um, tends to be a bit sort of bluesy, jazzy. Again, it's a nice contrast to, to what we often do. Uh, again, with the concert pieces, there tends to be a lot more available. Um, so uh, again, so we've got some pieces here for the music by black composers. Florence Price. Okay, um, definitely students should should definitely learn about her and they should learn learn some of her music. She's got some really wonderful stuff, a lot of stuff for piano, because that was her main instrument, and organ. Um, so she was uh, the first uh, Black American female composer to have a symphony performed by a major orchestra. Uh, she had a symphony performed by the Chicago Symphony, the whole symphony. Um, so she's she's important. And for there's, um, if you want to tell your students about her, um, for a long time, we thought a great deal of her music had been lost, and then it was only fairly recently that there was a house that was for sale that had been her summer home, and they were going to demolish it, and the people went in to take a look before it was demolished, and they went up to the attic, and they saw all these boxes, which contained music, manuscript, and they looked at this, and they saw the name Florence Price, and they went, oh, I don't know who that is, and they googled this and found a professor at the University of Arkansas who was researching her and so they contacted him and said hey we found these boxes do you want them I said, yes <laughs> and like her two violin concertos were in there um all sorts of music those were thought to be lost that's why I say you know as far as we know because prior to that people were saying oh yeah she wrote we think she might have written two violin concertos but they've been lost well they're no longer lost they've been found they've been performed yeah look at your attics so it's a great story of of you know finding stuff the deserted garden is gorgeous it's actually the first piece i ever heard by her and maybe just go oh, i want to know more about her this is so beautiful so um i've put that as being level five it's a great piece to work on vibrato it's quite simple um but it's 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 yeah good for working on good tone 
Um, oh, and Pam Wedgwood has some things in, in the ABRSM series. She also writes as Louise Chamberlain, and I think you know about her. Did you know some flute stuff by Louise Chamberlain? Or someone I was talking to. Anyway, she writes under both names, Pam Wedgwood and Louise Chamberlain, and a lot of, a lot of sort of jazzy stuff. It's good fun. And again, in level six, I also included oh, by Florence Price here, um, the, uh, the elf and dance, um, which is a good fun. Oh, the goblins will get you. Okay. <laughs> this is, this piece is, it's excellent. It's in the um, intermediate one, which is because that's just uh, first to third position. And so it's, it's put in with a lot of pieces that are a lot easier. And they, they put it there because they, they organize things by first position, first to third, first to fifth. However, this piece includes ricochet double stops and false harmonics and, um, and some tricky rhythm things and triplets and fast stuff. So it is a difficult piece. Um, even though it doesn't go higher than third position, it is difficult. So I put it as being RCM level six. Um, and I think you really need to be there. I mean, double stopping, ricochet double stops. I mean, come on. You can't give that to, to someone who's only just figuring out their position. Um, but it's a great piece, you know, and especially if you have a Halloween concert, you can get a student to learn it for that. It's it's excellent. If, if I may interject, she's also, um, she does have a thing about goblins. Oh. She's written the goblin and the mosquito. For, oh, for piano. For piano, for RCM level six. Six, in okay, books. in the new books, yes. Um, yeah. So interesting. It's very cute. So yes, I I would guess so. This piece is lovely as well. Okay, um, and then level seven. Oh, okay, the violin music um, von Komponisten from Schott. It's got about thirteen pieces, uh, and the Romance by Dora Pajacevic is just gorgeous. It's really lovely, and I think that could be done by a level seven student. There's a number of pieces in that book that are good for your your intermediate. Um, level students. Um, Gina Branscombe, she's a Canadian composer, lived in the States a lot. And again, that's in the, the, the blue book, the Cora Cooper books. It's a beautiful piece, great for working on tone. Um, and of course, the Maria Therese von Paradis Sicilienne is, is a piece that everybody knows. Um, and then um, also in the ABRSM, the old 2020, 2020 book is this, a piece by Suzanne Lund Lundang. Um, and she's a Norwegian folk music, fiddle music player. And uh, I had a student play that two years ago, I think, and just loved it. So that is intermediate level violin repertoire. Let's go to viola. Viola, okay. Here's the suggested stuff. I uh, come down to viola. And I'm sorry, when we get to viola, um, especially to the higher levels, I, I don't teach viola beyond about grade eight because there's so many great violists in town, I figure if you're at a grade eight level, you should go study with a violist instead of with a violinist who pretends to play viola. So, um, but anyway, here, intermediate stuff, I can still talk about this a bit. Um, again, concertos, there is nothing. So I complained about violin only having two in level four and one in level five. And well, for viola, there is absolutely nothing by a woman composer or a black composer yet, yet, this might change. <laughs> As of today, there's nothing, but that might change. Um, so, and you know, I think actually the Baklanova uh, concertino has that lovely rich D minor Russian sound. I think that's something that would sound really good on viola. I think it might even sound better, or dare I say that, on viola than violin, because it has that sort of richness to it. So someone needs to transcribe it. Okay, um, and again, uh, Liv Elfkul, that's a great resource. I linked to her before she's that swedish violist um oh yes um as for sonatas she does have a sonata on her cd or on her list by maria hester park and she's recorded it um but i i've been looking and looking and i can't find a score so i don't know where that exists but at least you can hear it and and we just have to keep looking if i do find it i will you know put a little um a little comment here and put it on the side so I do find it and you come to this later might be there so check back um uh rcm does not have a lot of because the 2013 it's a long time ago it's a different world back then and there's not a lot of pieces uh in the viola books than um 
uh, by women composers or and I think nothing by black composers as far as I can tell. Um, it does have a piece by Violet Archer in level four. Um, level five has zero and level six has one piece by Sh uh, Christine Donkin, the Catch Me If You Can, which is good fun. And one piece by Rose Bolton called Very Near the Edge of the Flat Earth. And uh, it's, it's uh, I'm just come here in a little bit. stop there <laughs> again and i'm sorry to stop things like that but we only have an hour and a half interesting piece it's a neat piece um just go have a listen to it um okay now i did click here to to her spotify let's see if that opens up the live cool and what did i want to play ah, i can't remember there's so many great pieces here oh um Oh, by the way, when you go to the Spotify thing, this first piece here, it says it's the Ethel Barnes Lafon, and it's not. It's actually the Maria Hester Park. Um, is it going to play? Yeah. This is uh, 100 years earlier. So, sorry, that's Spotify being silly. Um, and uh, yes, the Agatha Becker Grandal pieces are quite lovely. Um, here's a little example of this. And who did I put? Is it going to play? I thought it was going to play. What are you doing? I thought it was. Oh, that's still that. Oh, sorry about that. Anyway, the, the Becca Grindel pieces, she was a Norwegian composer about the same time as Grieg. Um, and actually, um, oh shoot, um, who's the guy who wrote? Oh, anyway, she was well-known. She's an excellent pianist, tiny little woman, tiny little hands, but her piano concerto has like enormous stuff. I don't understand how she did it, but she did. Um, she didn't actually write anything for violin or viola. She wrote a lot of piano pieces, a lot of vocal pieces, gorgeous songs um but live out of cool has taken a number of her pieces and transcribed them for viola and piano um they're not commercially available but i wrote to her about this and she said oh here you go and she sent me a pdf of the agatha becker grindall so um <laughs> let me know if you want them <laughs> um but she didn't I, I was actually asking about buying them and she's like no here you go wow that was really nice um also on this uh, CDs that the hemp the um, this is uh, I can't remember if I put this under senior or under under intermediate um, but it's uh, this is uh, I'm gonna who's that gonna play Broke style. So anyway, I just wanted to get the idea of that. That's actually, um, oh, I should put it here. There it is, we can see this. Um, so that was down here. Remember that? Um, that was a piece that was meant meant to sort of introduce students to the idea of, of sort of unaccompanied, like the, playing the unaccompanied cello suites on viola. It's a little bit easier, gives you an introduction to that style and how to play and, and that. But they're, they're good pieces. They're quite interesting. Again, the viola music anthology, when we get to the intermediate levels, 
it's got a lot more pieces that were commissioned for the viola book so it's not just transcribing the violin stuff um and there are some lovely pieces in there again more of the wendy ireland uh, kitty miniatures there's also the irish fancy i had a student play that last year and she really enjoyed it it was it was really good fun ethel glover at twilight that's in both the violin and the viola books um and it's i said it's a parlor song style it's it's very much that sort of english parlor song type piece it's quite lovely um okay so let's close that off let us go now what's next oh any questions about intermediate repertoire before we hit senior stuff can you tell me what was the one you said would be great transcribed for viola oh the baklanova natalia baklanova yeah it's uh it's d minor it's it's good fun it's just i think it's got a nice richness to it um so yeah, what are you thinking if you transcribe for cello? Not for viol. For viol, okay. Okay, well, if there's no comments, questions about intermediate, we'll dive into senior. This is great because now we're getting into real repertoire, like stuff that you would hear professionals perform. And, and again, there's no um, concertos listed in RCM or ABRSN because they don't do concertos. Um, but here are some... some um, uh, thing for concerto, some things that I, I'd recommend. Again, I'm just going to play some of these very, very briefly. This is back to violin now. I do violin in blue, and all the viola pages are in purple here. Um, so, Madalena Lombardini Sermon, uh, she's a violinist, uh, child prodigy, etc., um, in Italy around the same time as Haydn, and uh, wrote a lot of pieces for herself to kind of show off playing violin, or I say show off for herself to perform. Um, there are um, here we go. I'm just gonna see I think this is where the violin comes in. Anyway, so that's the style of those. Um, I said there are six of them. In my um, suggested repertoire list, I'll just come over here again. Um, I'd actually put down, I played through them and I put down the one in B flat major as being about a grade eight level and the E major as being about a grade nine level. And oh, I thought I put one down. Yes, and then the A major as being a grade 10 level. That was the C major, which I haven't played through yet. Um, and but that's the only one I know of that currently has a piano reduction. So that's a bit of a barrier to learning these concertos because at the moment the scores are available, the parts are available. You can play it with orchestra, <laughs> um, um, but but playing it with piano is a little difficult at the moment. But again, so far, as far as I'm aware, that is the only one that has a piano reduction, and that's quite new. Um, that and that's the C major. Hopefully, the others will follow. Uh, then also under concertos, uh, oh, actually, I should maybe look here first. Uh, that was the only one I put under grade eight level. Under grade nine, again, I put another one by her. Under 10, we we're getting a bit more, oh, oh, that's right. The other ones are under, under ARCT level. Um, so you see, there's a lot of concertos that are really quite excellent. Um, Joseph de Bourlogne, the Chevalier de Saint-Georges, has a number of concertos. I just put two of them here. Um, again, no piano reduction available yet, as far as I know. That might change. Um, maybe it's already changed and it's changed since I wrote this. Um, Amanda Röntgen Meyer, Violin Concerto. Um, the edition is from, from Swedish Musical Heritage. There is a piano reduction. Um, there's only one movement of that. Um, and some people say that there were three and the other two movements have been lost. Some people say, no, she only ever wrote one movement. I don't know. She's dead. We can't ask her. Um, but again, it's very similar to Brahms. Um, he, she wrote it when she was quite young. He heard her. He wrote to her and said, "Hey, I really, I'm really impressed with you, both as a violinist and as a composer." Samuel Taylor, uh, Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Um, he was a Black British composer, um, mostly known for his Hiawatha Suite for orchestra. Uh, but he's written some. Uh, he was a violinist as well as a composer. So a lot of stuff by him that's very difficult for violin, like his concerto. And I'm just, I'm going to skip the Amanda Röntgen Meyer for them and just go to the Samuel T Coleridge Taylor. And just, yes, where the violin comes in.
it's a great piece. You should listen to the whole thing, by the way. <laughs> but you know, that's 13 minutes, which we don't have time for today. Um, Samuel Taylor College. So I put that under, under ARCT. And I think even with that little clip, you can see why, yeah, it may not be done by anyone more junior than that. Um, so that was senior level concerti. Um, for sonatas, there's lots of choice with um, senior level sonatas. Um, now, did I want to say anything about them? Because uh, I know we're going to run out of time. And I do want to make sure we have some chamber music time as well. Um, again, so the Chevalier de saint georges number of sonatas starting, I put them starting level eight, which is what we're talking about right now. Um, and I just put a little note here about the, the B flat major. There's, um, there are different editions on IMSLP. One of them has G flat, the other has G naturals, and the G flats are right. You'll see that. But that's a little note there, so you know. Emily Meyer, um, a German composer, 1812 to 1883, she wrote a ton of music. Um, so there's seven sonatas for violin. There's a whole, uh, there's eight sonatas or 12 sonatas for cello, I think, quite a few for cello, um, and string quartets and symphonies and and blah 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 blah. Lots of music by her, um, and it's lovely. It's all. I'm going to come. To, hopefully, if we have time, I'm going to play a little bit from one of her string quartets later on. Um, but those are, you know, if your student can play Beethoven, your student can play play Emily Meyer. Similar technique, similar style. Um, um, yeah, and, and it's just really nice. Jemaine de Taifer, so she was the only female member of Les Cis. Uh, so again, French music. I put one of, I put the first movement in level seven, I think. Yeah, of her sonatina. And then the next two movements in uh, in level eight. And Pauline Viardot, uh, she, or pa Viardot Garcia, uh, again, another French composer and uh, and singer. Um, she also wrote a lot of small operas, like mini operas for her students. So there's a lot of operatic stuff there. And she's got some great stuff for violin. There's the sonatina, which is, is really good for, I would say, yeah. Um, the first and second movements could be by level eight students, the third movement by level nine. She also has a set, I don't, I think I put them under the, maybe later on under concert pieces. Um, she has a set of six um, short pieces sort of, and one of which is the first one, the Berceuse is a little bit easier. That could be done maybe grade six or seven. The other ones, the Tarantella and that a little bit harder can be done later. But, you know, lovely, you know, um, sort of late 1800s, early 1900s French music um, and full of that kind of French um, harmonies and impressionist kind of style. Uh, concert pieces, Louise Adolphe Lebeau, uh, definitely look her up. Again, another French composer, funny story about her, I think it was her cello sonata, won a competition, but they weren't expecting the competition to be won by a woman. And so the, the certificate said Herr, which means Mr. in German, and the hair was crossed out and they had to pencil in on top frau <laughs> <laughs> louise adolfo lebeau because she won and and um and that was her cello sonata which is any cellists in the audience want to learn it uh it's a really good piece her romance here um i put it under the concert pieces here um i put it under level eight uh it could maybe even be in level seven it's something that it's one of those pieces it's a great one for students to learn because it sounds so much harder than it actually is. Yes, it has these sort of G minor chords. Um, it has some high stuff and all that. Uh, it's, it's kind of virtuosic, but it's it's easy virtuosic. So um, it's a really good um, uh, sort of confidence booster. If you have, you have a student grade sort of seven, eight level and, uh, and, and you wanna give them something to help them feel like they're really amazing and wonderful. It's a great piece to give them because as I said, it's, it, Yes, it's it's not simple, but it is one of those pieces that sounds harder than it is. So it's it's a good um, confidence booster. And again, oh, the Emily Meyer, I talked about her a minute ago. She has a, a nocturne in the, the Women Composers book. It's great. Uh, Lily Boulanger, um, her nocturne and cortege are in the RCM, have been for a long time, in the RCM level eight syllabus, but not the repertoire books. Um, they They are, I'm not entirely sure they should be grade eight. They could maybe be grade nine. The nocturne is easier. The cortege, it's difficult to play well. But anyway, oh yes, talking about RCM grade eight. Um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised I didn't put that there. Oh, because I put it later on. Okay, 
Um, so one thing you need to know about the uh, RCM syllabus that came out in 2022, uh, they had originally, they had, you, had, you could get the books on pre-order. And when I looked at the pre-order, the, the diversity was not great. And then there was a delay between when you could pre-order and when they came out. And when you could pre-order, you could click on it and see what are the contents. And you look at, and I looked through at all the pieces and I did the map of what the representation was and it wasn't great. Um, and then when the books came out, there was actually a higher level of diversity. So, and this was, you know, they realized that, oh, I guess we should take all of this Me Too and Black Lives Matter stuff into account. And so they did include in the younger grades a number of pieces from the Music My Black Composers book, which is great. Very glad they did that. But um, in the, they didn't do much in the upper levels. What they did do was in RCM grade eight, they added three pieces that are in um, ABRSM grade eight. And, and, and I think I've mentioned this a couple times already, the, the, two, the two systems don't line up. ABRSM grade eight does not equal RCM grade eight. In fact, ABRSM grade eight used to have first movement of the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. Now, if there are any violin teachers out here who routinely give their RCM grade eight level students the Mendelssohn Concerto, uh, but anyway, I don't want to talk to you if you do. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry. I, I mean, really, would you want to hear an RCM grade eight student play the Mendelssohn? And you're like, no. And by the same token, I really wouldn't want to hear an RCM grade eight student play the Clarence uh, White Levy Dance. And I can't remember, did I? I didn't actually include that in there. I was going to, um, but I, cause so I've put that as being a late level 10 piece. Here we go. And so here there's, uh, oh, and yeah, I did, uh, I did include a, a video of, of Augustine Huddle with Joyce Yang playing it. You know, they don't tend to play, play level eight pieces, not, not players like that. Um, that's a great video. It's lots of fun. It's a wonderful piece. So don't give it to your grade eight students, please. Whatever RCM says, give it to your grade 10 students. Your grade 10 students will do it well. They'll enjoy it. They'll sound good. Um, it's a lot, lovely, fun piece. Um, and, you know, and it's, um, and it's, it's good for them to learn the music of Clarence Cameron White and who he was and, and all of that. Uh, so that's all I want to say about violin, I think, advanced stuff. We talked about concertos and sonatas and concert pieces. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Florence Beecher's Price Fantasies are great fun, too. They're really lovely. Unaccompanied. The um, Jesse Montgomery Rhapsody. Um, that's, I put that in ARCT level. Yeah, it's got tenths. Need I say more? Okay. Uh, so let's go to viola. There we go. Okay, viola, senior level. Okay. Um, unfortunately, there's not much that I can say because I don't teach at this level. Um, for viola. Um, so I've just put down here some concertos that I've listened to that I think are great. Uh, two things you should know about. Rebecca Clark. Oh, now did I? I did. Yes. Her viola sonata, which I hope all violists know, has been orchestrated. Um, and in fact, Tanya Popoff played it a few years ago here in Vancouver. Um, I was in the orchestra for it. It was great. Um, Anyway, sorry, you know the piece, right? Listen to it, listen to the orchestrated version. It's amazing. You listen to that and you think, now how did it sound with piano? <laughs> um, it's really neat. Um, and then also under the concertos list, and this is, this is where things go a bit funny. So that's a sonata that has been orchestrated. Um, French composer Fernand de Crook, uh, who's mostly known for more um, uh, wind and brass stuff, a lot of stuff for saxophone. She's written a, she wrote a sonata for saxophone or viola, and she calls it a sonata, but it's for the solo instrument plus orchestra. Now, there's also an arrangement with piano, but it was originally written to be with orchestra, but it was called a sonata. So I like, what? Anyway, and I've got a link here to, uh, to a recording so you can hear it, and, and a link to where you can, can buy it. But it's a neat 20th century French um, piece, a good piece. Uh, sonatas. So these sonatas, um, apart from the Svea uh, Wallander, a, a Swedish composer, apart from that one, these are all transcriptions of, of cello sonatas. Um, and I, the Helen Liebman. Um, what were, oh, yeah, we don't need to hear you. Today.
etc. Um, again, it's a great piece. Um, not a lot of sort of classical sonatas that for cello or viola, especially for viola. Um, so this is a great, you know, get that sort of classical feel of, of sonatas for viola, the Helen Lehman. The third movement is, is a set of variations. I'm not going to tell you what it's a variation on. You will recognize it when you listen to it, and you can listen to the whole thing later. Um, it's great. It's so much fun. Uh, and Mina Keel, I definitely have to talk talk about Mina Keel, um, because one of the things I like about diversity of composers is we get a lot of different stories uh, about their lives and how they what they did and how they did it and how they lived. And Mina Keel is um, well, I'm going to tell you about her. So, so she studied piano as a kid and started composing when she was 12, and she wanted to go to university to study music, and she did get into the Royal Academy. Um, and she started, but then she was, uh, her father died. And so she tried going to the academy just two days a week and spending the rest of the time helping out at the family business. They had a, a, um, a Hebrew bookstore in London, she was in England. Um, but, uh, but she quit when she was 19. Uh, it was too difficult to manage the, the, the double life. And, uh, and she was uh, at that point, I think had apparently been kind of shy, which doesn't really jive with what we know about her later on. But anyway, um, and so she had nothing more to do with music at all. She was working in the family business until she retired at the age of 65. Now I have a quote from an article um, from The Guardian. After retiring from a boring office job in 1969, she gently resumed the piano, qualifying as a teacher and taking on the occasional pupil. A chance encounter with the composer Justin Connolly transformed her life again. He saw her college work and was convinced she should have another go. In 1974, her son gave her a Christmas present of composition lessons with Connolly. And rather than declining, as she thought, into the evening of her years, an unlikely prospect, though she called her first piece Lament, Mina or Mina began to compose obsessively as she did everything else. So yeah, so most of her works, she wrote after the age of 65. And, uh, and, and she was 80 when her symphony was premiered at the BBC Proms um, at the Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> Talk about a late bloomer. Uh, and I just love having these stories that, that doesn't follow the standard child prodigy and then dead by 30 sort of thing. <laughs> um, so anyway, here's a little bit of her fantasy for viola and piano. Oh, and I'll tell you about this CD as well. Sorry, I just stopped there. Um, it's a great piece. It's really expressive, as you can guess already from the first half a minute. Uh, lovely piece, and it's lovely to talk to your students about this composer and tell, tell them about her. By the way, this CD, La Viola, is music for viola and piano by women composers of the 20th century. And you'll see um, from the link, it'll get you here, and you've got all these other pieces on here. Of course, yes, includes the, uh, the Rebecca Clark Sonata, as well as lots of other music that you might not be familiar with. Um, it's a lovely recording. Um, okay, was that all I was going to say about viola repertoire? Yes, I guess, because we're almost out of time. Chamber music. So um, what I'm sharing here is another Google Doc. Um, and again, same thing, you can, you can quote, you can uh, comment on things on the side. I'm the only one who can write in the body of it, but you can comment and add things here. This is actually um, what I have at home in my library. And I am open to other musicians in town 
borrowing my music as long as you give it back to me in good condition. Um, so, and I've, I've uh, listed things here in order of difficulty. So Joanne Martin, I think a lot of us are familiar with her living Canadian composer, her folk strings and more folk strings, really playable by RCM level three students, good for beginner string quartet stuff. Madalena Lombardini Sermon, we heard a bit of her, one of her concertos before, she's got six string quartets that I know of. Um, they're good fun. One of the nice things about them is uh, the, the four parts tend to be a little bit more um, even. Uh, as a lot of the Haydn string quartets, they're lovely pieces, but the first violin part is really hard, and the other three people <laughs> doing much. Um, and at least with her, it's not exactly completely democratically equal, but the other three players, the, the, the motifs in that do get thrown around between all the players. From not all the string quartets, but some of them, um, you get a little bit more of that, which is good fun. Um, Cecile Chaminade, this is an arrangement of, of some of her piano pieces, 10 miniatures. And again, there's a variety of, of levels there, but they're, again, French music, it's lovely, it's beautiful. Elena Katz Chernin, um, this is a little harder, I'd say level eight and up. Some of her stuff is quite a bit harder. These things, the pieces that I have, are, I think are, could be done by level eight. So she's a contemporary Australian composer. And these are very much uh, jazzy style, good fun. Um, the Fanny Hensel string quartet is absolutely gorgeous. It's really, it's a beautiful piece. Um, and I think uh, it's playable by, by level nine students. And I would love to hear, you know, summer music camp kids doing it. Alice Mary Smith. Okay, I, I just have a little request here. I bought it and I have it in my library. I have not heard a recording. I've not been able to find a recording yet. But I like everything else of hers that I've heard that she's written, so I bought it, and now I'm just looking to arrange to get three people to come over and read through it with me, and I haven't done that yet, but I really hope to find three friends who will join me in playing through it and see what it's like. Um, Ethel Smythe, that's a little more difficult, <laughs> um, uh, but again, she was, oh, and Ethel Smythe is, again, a composer that our students should learn about. Um, I mean, how many other composers were arrested for throwing a rock through the window of a of a um, MP and then conducted the women out the window of her prison cell with a toothbrush. I mean, come on. <laughs> There's great stories with her. There's lots of stories about her. She's a very passionate woman. Um, other chamber music in my, so those were all string quartets. I've got Rebecca Clark piano trio, the Cecile Chaminade piano trio. Um, and I have to admit, I played the Louise Ferenc quintet. It's the same uh, instrumentation as, as the Trout quintet. Uh, she wrote two of them. I have one of them. Um, but I can't remember if it was easy or hard. I, it was 20 years ago I played it. I remember enjoying it. I don't think it was hard, but I can't, uh, I'd have to play it again to figure out what level it'd be good for. There's a lot of free stuff on IMSLP, particularly with, with older pieces. A um, lot of wonderful stuff from Amanda Meyer, and a lot of her things, uh, string quartet and that, um, can be found from the Swedish Musical Heritage website. And we've got the link there that you can go to. Um, Val Valbori Ola, another Swedish composer, again, available on IMSLP and also from the Swedish Musical Heritage. Um, so I do have a lot of the Swedish stuff there simply because the Swedish Musical Heritage website is so great. Um, and they've, they've really done a good job of, of, of finding their composers and making it available. Okay. 50 for the future. Now, did I? I should have. Yeah, here we go. Um, oh, I, I wanted to do the Emily Meyer first. I don't have the music for this, but it is on IMSLP. And her, the slow movement from this concerto, I think I clicked to it. Oh, shoot. Anyway, it's, it's just, that slow moment especially, just makes me cry. It's just so beautiful. Um, yes, um, we should be playing that, we should be teaching it. As for teaching, um, the Kronos Quartet, their 50 for the Future, is a really neat program. They got 50 composers, and all of, all of their music um, from this program is free. So you can go to their website, and, um, and you can see the list of the composers and their pieces. The music is there, you can download the score, you can download the parts, you can watch a recording of the Kronos Quartet playing these pieces, 
And sometimes there are like um, pedagogical videos explaining some of the extended techniques. The idea behind the 50 for the future was that a lot of the contemporary music for string quartet, a lot of it's been written for them and they are amazing players. And so therefore the music that's been written for them has been extremely difficult. And so their feeling was, well, you know, students who are learning to play in a string quartet or in student quartets when they're in, maybe in university or about to go to university or even young starting a career, um, they're learning a lot of the standard repertoire, but they're not ready to learn contemporary stuff because the contemporary stuff is so difficult and you need a lot more experience before you can do that. And we would like to take some of these contemporary techniques and have them simplified, have them done in a way that advanced students can play. Some of the pieces um, on this site, I'd say are really, some of them I feel it can be done by level six students. Some of them not, some of them, you know, RCM level 10, ARCT, it, you know, but these are meant to be teaching pieces. They are meant to be your senior level students um, and university level students. So I just, um, and there's so much great stuff. I thought for a contrast to the other thing, I would play a little bit of this one, which has a, a video that goes with it. Um, so she's an Iranian composer, I believe. It's, it's, it starts slowly like that. So it's a wonderful resource. And the last thing I want to do is play something a little more fun. Uh, William Grant, still American, uh, Black American composer, lots of great music. There's some of his stuff I put in the violin, concert pieces stuff, his African dances. Um, um, yeah, there was a violinist here for the Recital Society last year who performed them, I think. Um, anyway, they're great pieces, lots of fun. Here's last moment from one of his string quartets. Sorry, it's hard to stop these things in the middle. And that's it. Yay, that's the end of the stuff. So, oh. <laughs> hope you listened to all of those pieces. <laughs> I know it's a lot. Uh, and I hope this recorded the whole thing. Yes, it's still recording, good. So, any questions? Anything on chat? Questions, comments? Please feel free. Um, can you look at the, the Google Docs that I've shared to add any pieces you think should be added or add comments if you think, well, no, that shouldn't be in grade four, that should be in grade two, <laughs> that should be in grade eight, whatever. Yeah. Feel free to add, add those comments. Um, I won't delete them unless they're offensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> or wrong. <laughs> or, well, a lot of that's opinion, right? I'd be like, well, I disagree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and fair enough, I'm sure there, there are many. Says, that was so awesome, thank you, Sarah. Oh, that's very sweet. Um, and I'll be sending out an email to everyone that signed up with all of the documents and links and everything, which is absolutely. And I'd also love to take a picture of all of the books. So oh, when yes. We're done. Yep. We're wrapped up. We don't have to do that right now, but we'll send out a picture. Everybody has those titles. Right. There's one book that I should have brought that I forgot to, but, so. but that was in the senior level. So, okay. So shall we uh, stop recording? Thanks, everybody. Yay. Stop recording. Bye. Stop right, recording.